ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready, girls! He's taken another one, and another, and Howard Foster has stopped it! Wow! That is going to be controversial! And the crunching right hand, and that must finish it! It must finish it! Taylor trying to catch himself, using his jab! on tv back in the house again i'm gonna do a quick mic check mic check one two one soon yes raps on tv back in the house again reporting from london fresh uh been away for a couple of weeks back to back in the studio with the main man in and what's good all good man all good as you can see i'm in here with a three-piece suit yeah i know you went to court today bro just to impress buster case and all of that you know, I know it can't hold you down, can't hold it down, down, man. But it's been good, guys. Um, listen, uh, we're back to talk about the events of the weekend. I wouldn't say it was um highly entertaining in terms of options, but I do think the unification fight went down. It was pretty good. But obviously, we just got to say the usuals. Thank you for all the guys downloading iTunes, YouTube. Listen, people, we need to up our YouTube numbers. So please, please, please subscribe and like any content that we upload. Uh, definitely we're looking to up our levels this year is 20,000 in 2018 so again everyone's up in their levels in the game so I think it's only right bro. Is it, is 100% it? man and we have got plans in motion and when those plans kick through I think he's going to blow the competition away yeah exactly so um, listen um, the activity this weekend came from the US um, so it's all overseas uh, we got to see one of our own man like James DeGale Chunky uh, do his road warrior trip again um, he was successful this time um, so he was one of the fights we're going to discuss later on today also we're going to have obviously the other fight between Erislandi Lara and Nam you... yeah so uh, yeah so uh, we're going to be talking about, yeah so we're also going to be talking about Erislandi Lara and Swift uh, Swift Heard what, 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 what our views about the fight and 154 pound in general what will happen with, with the fight with him and Charlo we're also going to be talking about AJ making an offer to Wilder apparently this week. Analyze that, break that down, see how, how realistic that is and whether a fight will be made. And we're also here, Mayweather has been making comments about Javonta Davis fighting Lomachenko this year. Is he serious? We're going to be talking about that. And finally, Mayweather finally confirms he'll be fighting in the MMA. We've seen some ridiculous tweets out this week though, where he's fighting in MMA with no... No kneeing, no elbows, no takedowns, anything like that. So it's hard. I think that's real. That's a, that's a, that's a, it's a bit too much. I saw it to cut in, but it's yeah, a bit too much. It sounds like a bit of a joke, man. Anyway, guys, make sure you call in on 01506 243 403. Get calling. Don't be shy. Call in the studio. That's if you're in the UK. I know we've got US fans trying to get in through to us, is trying to get through to us as well. So please dial on plus one eight one eight seven nine four seven zero zero four. That's from the US. Over to you, Coach. Yes. So uh, yeah, um, obviously we're going to touch on the uh, the girl versus trash fight. So late last year. Um, yeah, late, uh, late last year we saw uh, the girl, and I'm going to quickly, I guess, give a breakdown of that fight. Um, James DeGale fighting, returning to London for the first time in a while, uh, down at the Copper Box down in East London, took on an unknown quantity in a man like Caleb Truax. Um, I think most of us probably thought that was going to be an easy win for him. Um, it wasn't. Um, Truax came and showed a lot of heart, a lot of grit, a lot of dogfight. Um and we was looking forward to the rematch. Um, funnily enough, when the fight was uh, announced that Truex had won, we found out there was no rematch clause. So um, they've obviously negotiated that, uh, got their purses down, which came down quite substantially. Um, and here we are, where we have the we have the rematch. Yes, man, like Palm just touched down. Um, so we have the we have the rematch. So um, yeah, it's kicked off in Vegas. Very um, mute affair, I would say, if you look at the arena. Um, and in terms of the fight, I think it's fair to say that was probably pretty mute as well, in my opinion. Um, but Inam, what did you make of the fight and who did you pick to win going into it? Going into it, I thought DeGale was going to win. Um, I think there was a lot of feelings whether DeGale is over the hill, yeah. whether it's finished. Um, and, you know, I think looking at that fight, I think he probably is. You know, he's definitely mm. on the other side of his career. I thought if he did win, it's going to be a tight victory. 
mm-hmm. right? Um, and I think that's what's happened. I mean, a lot of people saying it's a robbery on the mm-hmm. other side of the States, America. A lot of fans saying it's a robbery, Trax okay. getting robbed. And I, you know, it was uh, for me, I think it was quite a similar fight to the first fight. You know, yeah. Trax coming forward like usual, yeah, you know, pushing, pushing the girl back. You know, for me, from what I learned from that fight, is Degel seems to struggle on the back foot quite a bit. Yeah. You know, the days of him coasting seem to be over. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, you know, I think at, style. You know, at the elite levels, man, I just don't think he can perform now. Yeah. You know, looking at that fight. Yes, uh, man, like Prime's doing those selfies. Yes, love it. Um, so, yeah, so I, 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 I would definitely agree with you. Um, in terms of the fight, it wasn't entertaining. Um, and I felt for, for Degel because I really wanted him to come back um, and, and, and obviously put on a great performance. Um, but I felt that with his style, which we know is, you know, low hands, a um, bit of a mover, but not really a jab merchant. Um, I think we saw that as he's going to get older, he's going to tire. I think that fight potentially was looked at as the weak link amongst the other champions. That's mm. why you had Benavidez there, you had Caleb Plant there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Groves has got other things but on, on, on his plate, but I'm sure he kept one eye on that. Good and point. Muscatai is his mandatory. Yeah. How does that fight pan out? I mean, I have to say, I don't know much about Muscatai um, in terms of watching his fights extensively. Um, from what I've seen from him, um, I think he will, I know it's easy to, but I think he will cause uh, the girl problems if the girl's not on it. And I don't know if it's whether, I don't, I've got nothing against the training at all, but I don't know what it is that he just doesn't seem to be kicking on because I could be honest and say last year I remember talking about him as being one of the true world champions that Britain had mm. you know what I mean when he had the belt I felt he was a true champion but yeah. I don't know he's just yeah he's gone, gone I mean down. like uh, Oscar Dye mate I've just seen two of his fights with Durrell mm. and he, he looks like a serious fighter man yeah. he looks like a, he looks like the real thing man yeah. you know what I mean and I think he will take, take I, th- I think he will beat to get up quite yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially at this stage of his career, I mean, the way he sort of dismantled Durrell, and you got to bear in mind, to get won his belt from Durrell, well, mm. we're fighting Durrell. Yeah. So, you know, when I look at it like that, you know, they he probably fought Durrell when they were both at their primes. Mm. So, if the way he beat Durrell, it shows to me Durrell's come over the hill clearly and mm. the over the hill. So if you look, apply that comparison, yeah. you know, yeah. you got an up and coming fighter, a mm. serious fighter as mm. well. And I think he, will, I think he beats Digo quite yeah. comprehensively. Yeah. Anyway, let's bring in Palm into the conversation. I need to ask a question, Palm. Palm, how much weight have you lost, man? Um, I was going to say, man, he's <laughs> shrinking. <laughs> he's, 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 he's shrunk, bro. Am I live? Yeah, yeah, you're live. Come on. Raps on guys, TV. Yes. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me again. God yes, bless. right, man. No worries. Um, guys, I've, I've lost about three stone. Yeah, what have you been doing, man? So there's a weight. You know what? Just just eating clean. Uh, yeah. I've been I've been sparring a little bit as well yeah. with the young lads, so yeah. that keeps me on my toes, keeps yeah. me fit. But generally, just eating clean, guys. Drinking yeah. loads of water, like you are, and I'm, yeah. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just eating clean, basically, yeah. guys. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I see. I yeah, see. This, yeah, this is a tonic water, mate. Yeah, I, I can see, mate. It's the, the finest. Yeah. Crab, good, crab. good to see you looking re- really Thank well. You. Keeping Thank you very busy. Much. Um, uh, quickly before we go on to the schedule you haven't been on or haven't seen you at least since you did your trip out to Vegas in Christmas that's right tell us a bit about it how it went how you uh, obviously captured a lot of good footage out there so yeah yeah that was uh, that was that was a great trip out there guys uh, over Christmas and New Year's I was planning to go out anyway uh, to be honest I was I was looking to sort of base myself in California and some of the guys that we know uh, sort of said, look, you know, Vegas is really where you want to be. Mm. So last minute, I sort of went from California, uh, LA, mm-hmm. went down to Vegas and literally spent pretty much three weeks going around to the different gyms. Mm-hmm. And you know how it goes, guys, you know, so so I've got some brilliant people who've supported me all the way mm-hmm. and and other, other doors I opened myself. Mm. So a big shout out to the people like the Mayweather Boxing Club, mm-hmm. City Boxing Club. Uh, Jorge Linares, Ishmael mm. Salas, if they're listening, uh, Jeff Mayweather, Eddie mm. Mustafa. So loads of great interviews out there. Yeah, I so, saw, man. Well you know, done. Thank you very much. Keep it moving, bro. That's thank all you. we're here to do, bro. We're it's all family. Sport. Exactly. Push the sport of boxing. So. Exactly. And I just want to say, guys, anybody listening, this is the biggest and the baddest boxing show. We hope we... That's what we want to... That's it. This is it. That's what we're on the way. That's and, what we're on route. Trust and, me. And I actually <laughs> feel humbled to be here. I know, we're, no, we're no, good no, friends. Thank you very much. Trust me. We're happy to have you. So listen, we were just quickly going into the Girl Truax fight. Yeah. Did you see any of it what was your what was your thoughts what was your thinking going into the fight to be honest guys i only caught a bit of it um as you know i've, I've done i've done interviews with both guys mm-hmm. especially caleb trex after the uh, after his win over here in london in december yeah. um <clears throat> i honestly thought that it would be a close fight mm-hmm. i 
probably just based on his more technical ability. Uh, technical ability. I was just going to give it to De Gaulle. Mm. But again, he made hard work of it, didn't yeah. he? Um, he's a great fighter. I think he's he's one of the best fighters off the back foot. Mm. But somehow he just makes it really difficult mm. for himself, doesn't and he, he? And in a weird way, if you really analyse, and like I said, I've, I've rated him as the true world champion. But he seems to do that quite frequently. Oh, let me ask another way. Go on. Let me let me ask you another question, right? Name me one outstanding performance from James the Girl. Like outstanding, like you, know, you think, wow, he just cruised through, like on a top level fight, like a top. To to be honest, I'm going to say even though it ended up in a draw, yeah, I'm going to on the Badu Jack yeah, fight last I would January. Agree. I would agree. We no, kickstarted. Hold on, hold on. When I say outstanding, as in like he won comprehensively, clean. And, and like, I know wow. that's that's the thing. I, I know, I know that's where that, you was yeah. going but with I have that. But to go with him. I have to say, I think, yeah. I think. When we see Bad Jack Stevenson, we might appreciate how well he done to get a draw out of that. Do you think Bad Jack that fight get, he has knocked. impacted De Gaulle and his long term? No, I, I mean the, the little traits he's got, like for example, leaning on the ropes. Mm. How many times, time and time again, have we probably either on television or when we've been there live, guys said, mm -hmm. "Come on, come on, get off the ropes," mm. and he seems to just sit on the ropes mm -hmm. and invite the punches in. Um, so, but is that because he might be lethargic? He might have stamina issues. I don't think he's got stamina think, injury. No. If I'm be honest, go and this is what I'm saying: it's the game plan. I mean, if you've got the energy and you've got the the heart, you come out from the ropes, but you so, can't fight. So, you know, for me, I have to be that. honest with you. I know you're, I think he's got stamina, but I think to consistent consistently do that, I think you need to employ a different game plan, and I think Definitely. that's what he needs to do. They need to do something about his game plan. You can't rest on the ropes. You can't have your hands low. No. You know, evading shots, moving because you're not a young man. That's a really, it's more of a young man's style. You're getting older now, so he needs to. Adapt. How does he and compare fighting like at George Groves, for example? To be honest, interesting question. Uh, and I'm, I was, I'm not going to mention name because I've got a lot of respect for this guy. But he's, he's. I asked him this same question, and he said to me, he said, for him. George, uh, sorry, uh, George Groves has James DeGale's number, and he said, "I don't think he'll ever beat him." Yeah, and to be honest, I think I think if James doesn't three. look, it was a good victory to go over to Las Vegas. So, so just say that again. So you've, you interviewed someone, and someone said this, is it? Not not interviewed. I had a private conversation yeah. with somebody okay. um, without naming names, yeah. but they th he knows both fighters right, and okay. has said that you know George Groves I mean, beat him every time. To be fair, people have gone on record and said that that's that's the case, and. Mm. Even though when I look at the, f the, the, the the fight they had, I can't even say the real fight because they were still young, but that fight that as a pro, the first fight as pros, um, I think it's hard to argue with, with that when you see, yeah, it was a close decision, um, but I think when you look at Groves and what the style that he brings and you look at the girl now, I think he will struggle to get past Groves' let jab. Ask yeah. And I think Groves' jab will just control the fight. Let me, let me throw another something to the mix there. Now, some people might think it's a ridiculous question, but mm -hmm. I think it's a sensible one. You bet Junior versus the girl. They were uh, you make no. the fight. I think make the fight. No, I. You know what? I. I. It's a hard one because you know. I'm. I'm sure at one point all of us wanted to aspire to be champions like them in the ring. I know I did, yeah. and and I don't like this saying this, but I don't think Chris Eubank is anything more than a European level. Look, man, which is fair. Which is look, a fair comment. I think. I think, I think and I, uh, and I think he's. Whether he's at middleweight or he's at 168 pounds, mate, he's in two of the strongest divisions. So I, so I don't disagree. I wouldn't, it's not, I wouldn't even disagree with that. I think at the end I of the day... I think he's above European think, level, man. No, but the thing is, I think that doesn't prevent anybody making a look, fight. I think, I think if okay. you look at a lot of champions, I would say there's probably champions that, even though they are world champions, what are about, What else about you, Ben Junior? Look, clearly he struggles with boxers. Mm. Right, yeah, but so he's got you know he's you know he's he's a pressure fighter, isn't he? He's mm. a pressure fighter. Yeah, putting it putting it in that shell, right? And he is a world class pressure fighter. This, yeah, mm. what you know he is. He yeah, is, but man. if he's a world class pressure fighter, he would beat world he would beat world class boxers or no man. Pressure, come on, but you know, pressure boxers fight. All, I mean, for me, like boxers always beat brawlers. Do you know what I mean? It's just the way you know. And it, it's something that he struggles with. Billy Joe Saunders, we saw that fight. It's practically it's pretty much the same thing with the George Gross fight, except he didn't come. You know, with the Billy Joe Saunders fight, he came through stronger on the second half of the fight. With the Jules Gross fight, he came, you know, he started coming on around 11th, 12th mm -hmm. round. You see what I'm trying to say? But again, like Kojo said, probably about Baddy Jack, oh, uh, sorry, DeGale as well. Do you think he should not be able to adjust during the fight? But what, 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 what is good in that? What, why I think Eubank Jr. might have an impact on that fight is time and time and time and again, we've seen DeGale struggle in the back foot. Yeah. Yep. Do we agree with that? Absolutely. Right? Do we think Chris Eubank Jr. has got the energy and the other thing I think we can whether it's true or not we can all question to get our stamina yeah yeah whether he's got it or not everyone's got that on their minds mm. does he suffer from stamina issues agreed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah.
Do we say Eubanks Jr. has got stamina issues? No, clearly he hasn't. No, One of his don't. strongest points is he's a yeah, fucking relentless guy, man. Yeah, he's just yeah. on you non-stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is if you combine someone who's got stamina issues with someone who's got a relentless engine, you'd think there's an opportunity for him to use that to his advantage and win a fight. So why why can Eubank Jr. not put it on uh, on, on De Gale and keep him on the back foot and win a fight? Why? Do you think he's got the te- technical skill to do it, though? That's another question. Kojo, I'm, you're I'm laughing. Just, I'm, I'm just here with popcorn right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, um, but like, is he got the same fighter though. I mean, like, I, I, I think, I think for me, no. bottom line, bro. Yeah. I think, I think for me, a lot of people might say it's a fight that shouldn't be made. I would say, you know what? I think make the made. fight. I think there's business sense behind yeah. it. I think they're yeah. both big names. That listen. Do you think that does O2 Arena? I think it does bigger uh, than yeah. O2. I no? think that's pay per view. I man. think it's. I think not only is it pay per view. I think it's bigger than O2. I think you could do that at the Emirates. Yeah. I know that's sixty k. You might reduce it down to fifty. I think in terms of a competition wise, I think it's a fair fight. Mm. Eubank gets a crack at a belt. Um, and for Groves, it's an opportunity to defend the belt for, for in the, the UK. For the girl, sorry, for the girl. Yeah. Yeah. It's an opportunity to defend the belt in the yeah. UK. For yeah. me, I think that should be an e- I think that's a really good fight. Yeah, to me. I, I think so. And the reason I'm saying it, I think, like, look, a few years ago, I'd say there's no, there's no question about talking about it, but I just feel like the girl's on the other side mm. now. So listen, where can the girl go from here, though, anyway? So one thing is fighting Eubank. I think that's a fantastic okay. pay-per-view, but, big, funny fight. But, do you, you know? th- do you think... Okay, two questions. Do you think that fight uh, can answers, be made? Answers, answers, Okay, all right. Answers. Where does the girl go from here? I think the girl's going to look for a unification fight. And George Groves, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if George Groves takes it because he thinks it's an easy fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm. George Groves has to fight Callum Smith first of one. I'll take him. that option. I think that's you a know? better option yeah. than Eubank because it's an t- opportunity... Um, but is that a harder fight? I and, think, and Callum, is, does, I think does, Callum Smith might win that one. Really? I mean, I think I think has got quite a few options on the table now. Now he's got his belt back. I think you know he needs to target the George Groves fight, hope, hoping that Groves has still got his WBA belt because yeah, that is a massive, massive fight. That's Wembley, right? And he's a massive yeah, fighter that's a as well. Fight. That's, you know, that's, that's a massive that's fight. Wembley. The only thing is, the only thing I think that will sort of spoil the story on this a bit is again that thing is like, is the girl finished now? That's what people will be questioning. Thing is, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you know why I listen, but at the end of the day, it's down to us to also resell it because as much as people... Like, I don't say finish because I think you can't count people out. And I'm going to give you the best example is George Groves because George Groves got knocked out twice. Nobody counted his age. Nobody counted the fact that he actually done well in the first fight and most people thought he was kind of harsh kind of robbed um, and he got knocked out twice or stopped twice and it was like he's finished then yeah he lost to Badu Jack but again it was in Vegas it was a close fight and we I think we still wait to see how good Badu Jack is so yeah, no, to say he's somebody it. finished and I, no no I'm yeah. not saying that he is reason, but I'm just saying for me, the girl's got options. I think that's the key thing now. Oh, he's got options. He's got there's options. So as long as you've got options, you can't be finished. There's options, but yeah. what I'm trying to say, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about in terms of options and mm. opportunities. Mm. I'm just talking about him as a fighter, right? Yeah. Clearly, he's not the same fighter, right? And clearly, we've seen a, uh, you know, a path where, you know, his performance has been coming week and week and week and weaker, right? Mm. You know, he won the belt yeah. with Durrell. Yeah. You know, fantastic four or five rounds start off with put him down, put Joel down, and then he, became, he coasted to the mm. end. Like, and people were like, what the fuck? You know, he could lose, he could lose this. He could lose this, mm. right? But he, he, thankfully, he didn't, right? Mm. Every other fight after he p- fights Paul Medina, you know, first few rounds does really well, second of the half, lethargic, mm. right? Mm. Lucien Butte, Butte, same, Butte, same yeah. thing, same right? Thing. Yeah. How many times can you put this performance on like that, right? Clearly, Truex comes along, bang, loses his belt, mate, right? Yeah. Just about gets his belt back. So when you look at it like That's that, what I'm saying, well, saying you see the trajectory of someone's performance going down, mm. down, down, down. Groves is very different to that man. Mm. Groves got knocked the fuck out, right? Mm. But that could happen to anyone. Mm. I've always rated Groves right mm-hmm. from the moment he started. But he's like man. a fine wine at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he's pulling know? out the performances. Yeah, yeah, you know, so that's very different, man. Mm. And he, and he, you know, Groves was losing at the prime of his career. Mm-hmm. We're talking about someone's tail end now. How old is the girl now? How old is he? Um, uh, he's the same age, about 30, 30, Groves, 32. Yeah, 32. 32. Yeah, 32. Yeah, man, he's coming yeah. at the tail end of his career. Yeah. And I think that Badu Jack fight took it out of him, man. I think, you know, I'm fight like I, that. I actually, in that, in that, a lot of wear and tear, man. In that division, I actually think without Andre Ward there, I think Badu Jack's the man. I think he's the man. To uh, be. Like heavy. I like heavy. Well, okay, was not there anymore. All right, but, we'll, 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 get, we'll get, get into that. Um, all right, guys. So listen, for that for that fight, the purse was three hundred k for each fighter. Um, clearly, that's substantially lower than what. 
the girl earning his last purse. Um, what do you think of the Heyman deal overall for the girl? Do you think it's worked? Do you think he should look at his options outside? You know, obviously her and you've got Warren. You know, what do you think he should do? Because it's 300k is 300k compared to like million yeah. that he was earning previously. Yeah. And I know, I know previously, I think we've spoken about it Who's as well with, with our Heyman. Mm. Uh, example being uh, Lomachenko versus Regendale. Mm. They, they probably didn't make the, the sort of money that they would have made on a pay-per-view platform. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm not sure. I mean, on, his, on that fight versus Truax, mm -hmm. that was a Frank Warren show. So clearly that hasn't gone too well. Mm. Does he go to Eddie? Does Eddie want him? I'm not so sure. Mm. But no, if I could, if, if, he's with the man though, isn't he? If you like, in I mean, some ways. Yeah, he is. He's still with Heyman and he's yeah. got options. So. You know, the thing is though, right? Um, with Heyman, he was getting two million a fight. A million, mm. you know, first he was getting a million, then he was getting two million. I think with Butte, he got two million dollars, mm. right? What you got to bear in mind is uh, Al Heyman started a business model where he was paying these boxes a serious amount of money, money and he was yeah, trying to, to sell a, a space, yeah. right? But Digo, I don't think he's ever been one of those fighters that can generate revenue. Mm, exactly. He's not a pay-per-view fighter. Yeah. He's fighting in America. He's not yeah. drawing big crowds That's there. Exactly. And th this fight was a clear example, man. Exactly. They fought yeah. at Hard Rock Cafe. And he wasn't right? even the main event. He wasn't the main event. He's the undercard. He's lost his belt. Yeah. 300,000 pounds probably reflects mm, that That's fight. dollars. Your dollars, sorry, yeah. that reflects that fight. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you're in a small room. I'm sorry, if you want more money, you've got to bring the business. Yeah. You haven't put the business, yeah. right? The only way Dugo is going to make money now, I think, is finding the UK. Mm. America, he can forget it. Mm. Who's there? Yeah, he fights Benavides, loses the belt, yeah, man. Benavides, you know, him. he's just I mean, you know. <laughs> Uskatai, he loses the belt. Yeah. Even if he fights the WBO champ, Ramirez, right? I think he loses his belt. So, you know right? what? Just I'm going to quickly say something Go random. On. What I like with PBC events, especially, is that you seem to see once there's like they have a lot of the fighters in the same division. So, you look at the welterweight division, you've got Porter, you've got Garcia, you've got Thurman. So, when one of them's fighting, they all turn up. You yeah. always get good instant footage afterwards. So, this weekend, you had Benavidez, you had Caleb Plant. Obviously, Kayla Plant and the girl went at it in the yeah. press conference. Yeah. But it was the way, the thing was, you got to see the aggression of Kayla Plant towards the girl. And then when Benavidez is stepping next to him, the calmness. And because they know Benavidez is a monster. So for me, yeah. I like seeing this stuff. I think it makes the ride a lot more enjoyable. And for us boxing fans, it gives us opportunity to see a bit more. Listen, going to go out to the lines now. Going out to men like 985. I know that's the dog, Appia. The dog. <laughs> Yo, D. Ah, oh, mate, you're low. What's happening, boy? What's going on, D, bro? D, you gonna do that again? You gonna do that again? Sound check, sound check. Do that again, bro. Woof, woof, woof. That was like a. There you go. <laughs> How you doing, brother? It's fucking habit. Yes, I'm all good. I'm all yeah. good. I'm all good, my brothers. Listen, yeah. listen. Um, first and foremost, just wanna big up. Raps on TV, Thank the whole show, much. you're Absolutely. fucking killing it at the Thank moment. You very much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 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 big things for the future. Thank you very um, much. No worries, no worries. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, we're talking about James DeGell. I think, you you know, I don't think you're a big fan of DeGell, but what, What's do, you your th what do you think of the fight? Um, pretty poor, really, to be honest with you, but he's done the job, mm. so... You know, that's enough, really. He's done the job. He's got his title back. Yeah, I think um, So, you know, but, um, we didn't look too convincing. Mm. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think that's a fair, we'll assi I think that's um, a fair assessment, D. D, yeah. Where, yeah. where do you think he should go next, number one, right? And number two, do you think, right, a DeGale and a Eubank fight is a good fight? Of course it is. It's a good fight. It's fantastic. Um, fight, I think the girl, yeah, brilliant. I think the girl wins all day. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be a fool and pick Eubank over an experienced sort of pro like the girl. No way. I think, um, I mean, I heard you saying about he's got the energy and that, but he freezes on the big stage, doesn't he? Yeah. He just freezes on the big stage. And I think the girl, I think the girl beats him really in that. Um, yeah. That's that simple. What other options has he got? Yeah. What, what other options does DeGale have? Oh, uh, well, he could fight the winner of the, um, of the uh, Super Series. Yeah. To me. He could yeah. fight the winner of that. There's the Vigos. Can, uh, can he beat Groves? Say that again. Can he beat Groves? No way. No, no chance, no chance. Groves all day long. Mm. Like Kojo was saying, like, Groves, I think, dominates that fight with a jab. I'll be just, yeah, I think Groves is, um, 
the time goes on, he's, he's just utilising his experience. Mm. Right there, yeah? Right, right there. Yeah, it's just using his experience as time goes on. So, yeah, there's uh, only one winner there, really. Mm. Only one winner there. Yeah, Steve, listen, we're gonna leave yeah. we're gonna leave you to it, but listen mate, we've gotta get a date, you've gotta do get get you in the studio. We're gonna start bringing in I'm gonna call you guys like the certified raps, like trust alumni, me. Alumni, man. Alumni, <laughs> yeah, trust yeah. me, they're These alumni. Ones are alumni. Okay. All right, we're, then. Get, we've got to bring guys into right, the studio. So listen, reach give us some dates, you know it's always a Tuesday. Or if there's a specific fight. Okay. Uh, and then let's let's just yeah. get you in, bro. Let's and let's talk let's talk. Maybe after the Billy Joe Saunders fight. That's in July, isn't it? Yeah, that's all. Oh, yeah, if that's because that's okay. July, June, or sooner. June, July. Yeah, I think okay. or sooner. Just okay. Okay. Right. Shout all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and we'll, we'll try and we'll try and sit something out sooner. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. Take care, fellas. Take care. Bye. 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 We're going out to three, four, eight. I know. I know these numbers now. I'm getting better. That must. I'm gonna say. Nick. How are you doing, Paul? How are you guys doing? Yes. How are you doing, mate? Big man, Tom. Thomas the Lion, yeah, how you doing? Thomas the yeah, Lion. very well, mate, very well. Doing, man? Yeah, what do you want to say, Tom? Go round up the weekend for us. Yeah, just before I do, I was just looking today. It's been um, a year since I come on board, so um, looking to do big things this year. So Fantastic. keep up the good work, guys. Congratulations. Fantastic. Great Fantastic. to have you part of the team. So go on, Tom, wrap up the yeah, weekend so, uh, for us. On to the, uh, yeah, on, in terms of the, uh, the girl fight, um, I think everyone sort of hit the nail on the head, really. It wasn't an uh, impressive uh, performance. Um, from whatever, I didn't get to watch the uh, full fight, just some highlights and um, what everyone's been saying. That, um, you know, Truex was applying the pressure early on, you know, backing him up onto the ropes. And um, it was a closer fight than what was made out in the end. So, yeah, far from impressed, really, for, uh, from DeGale. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what what... What specifically did you see when you was watching him and think he's just not doing enough of or you know, what do you think about his, his, his tactics and game plan for the for that fight? Yeah, I just I just don't think he's firing on all cylinders really. I think he's still reluctant to um use the you know, the shoulder that was operated on. Um yeah, there's just there's sort of a lack of confidence in that aspect. Um yeah, and just the reluctance to throw the uh the right hand, uh, which was, um, you know, playing a huge part um, in the last fight from what he's uh, said about um, not being able to throw it freely. Uh, but I don't think that should come down to, um, you know, being an excuse um, and taking away the momentum that he's had prior to the first track fight. Yeah. No. yeah. Cool. And um, you saw the Lara versus her. Did you, you, you call that fight? Yeah, much better fight that was, yeah. Um, I just thought that Hurd was able to, you know, impose his, um, his size and uh, get to Lara, who's probably going to, you know, he, he would always have the better boxing skills than her, but I just think the size played a massive uh, part and uh, the relentlessness from her to, uh, you know, smother him. Nice, nice. All right, listen. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move on to another subject, but stay on the line, um, and we'll be sure to obviously bring you guys back in. That's the same for you, D. Stay on the line, and we'll bring you guys back in for the next subject. All right, no worries, okay. guys. Cheers. Keep up the good work. Cheers. Appreciate Take that. Take care, Tom. Take it easy. So, uh, guys, uh, obviously that was the one, Lara versus her. We didn't get into that as much. Um, you caught that? Catch that? What do you think of the, that, that fight? Well. <clears throat> I mean, I, th- I think I, it was taking. It took me. I mean, I was a bit surprised, I have to say. Um, I, when I watched the Austin Trout herd fight, you know, the, the, there was for me there was two distinct patterns, right? Austin Trout was clearly the better boxer, was catching herd quite clean, relentlessly. But the one thing that stood out was herd's size. He was a huge yeah. compared to Austin Trout, and that size, I think you know, it had a massive impact on the fight because what was happening for someone like Trout to keep Heard off of him, he's having to use massive, massive power shots all the time. And you can't you know, in boxing man, you can't do that for twelve rounds, right? Yeah. Six you know, maybe two rounds, three rounds you can do it, maybe even four, five rounds, you're out boxing maneuver, eventually you're gonna mm. run out of energy. And that was happened in the trout fight. Mm. 
What I thought was going to happen with the Lara fight, I thought it was going to be a similar thing. I thought Lara was just going to completely outbox this guy. He's fresher than Trout, and I thought he would just outbox him, just constantly keep moving. And to some extent, that did happen. But again, I've been mean, heard was getting caught clean so often, mm. right? But again, it was that size difference. You yeah. know, it caught up. I mean, you look at the guy's size, man. He looks like he's two weights bigger yeah, than Lara. Fun. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a weight bully. And ultimately, for me, the only thing that made Heard win that fight was his size, mm. you know. And the interesting for Ruby is how does Charlo deal with that? Mm. You know, can Charlo deal with that size? And I don't think he can. Mm. Did I mean, you did you pick Heard going into? I that picked fight? Lara. I thought Lara would outbox him. <clears throat> See, I didn't. I didn't stay on the show at the time, but I was picking Heard to be honest. And it was off the trap fight, and I tell you why. It was only out of the size. I think for me, Heard, you can see he's not a technically gifted fighter in terms of the competition he faces. Lara, as you said, his head was knocking back. But unfortunately, the power doesn't do anything, so he can just keep coming. Keep um, coming forward. And I think he's going to have a similar style to... Um, uh, okay, um, he's going to uh, have a similar style to... Um, to uh, to uh, uh, to Wilder in that sense. So, um, yeah, for me, I was picking him. Not that I think he's the much better fighter, but literally just out of the basis of... Um, yeah, sorry guys, if you might have heard a bit of static there. Uh, um, yeah, uh, literally on the basis that uh, that was palm thinking, mate. Basically, <laughs> palm, palm thinking just sets of static, mate. <laughs> but yeah, basically on, uh, on 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 the basis that he was just a bigger guy. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really entertaining fight, though. Yeah. I think um, unfortunately we've seen the kind of like <laughs> execution is a strong word, but we've seen the Cubans get. Distinguished, we us boxing nuts, us boxing hardcore fans. Oh, he was a boxing was, nut. He was, was a boxing nut. There's yeah. only one boxing nut. He's not here, mate. Um, but yeah, so like we were, we we always rave about these Cubans, and yeah, you've had Rigondeaux, you've had Ortiz. At least Ortiz and Lara were in two competitive, entertaining fights. But we've literally just seen they're going down. I mean, man. you've seen two great fighters in in Lara and. Uh, uh, so do you actually see uh, Kel Brook winning a title at 154? Oh, man, let's not that's bring tough. Brook up, man. That's tough. It's a tough Listen, division, isn't at it? At 154, right? Do you? With the serious no. fighters. Yeah. You know, at the, with the serious fighters, forget it, man. Yeah. I mean, Maybe why don't... That man I wanna hear, why why, why yeah. don't you see him having a, a Well, a again... I mean, again, I mean, if you think if he if he fought one of those guys, I I mean, Brook's a great fighter. I think in the welterweight division, he was a he was a great fighter. Is he a great fighter or was a great fighter? Um, look, he's 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 lost to two very well. Even they are great fighters, Golovkin mm. and Spence. Spence mm. is still on his way up, mm. so you can't take anything away from that. I mean, for me, honestly, in both fights, he was winning the fights before he got stopped. Okay. Some will say Khan was winning the fight with Canelo, <laughs> which he was, which he was. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah, the point is, but, lost, mate, yeah, know. I know. But you know, he's lost to two great fights. Anyway, uh, I, th I think, I don't know. I don't know. You know, in order to win a world title, who he's got to fight in one fifty four? Does he have a realistic chance? I, I mean, think Saddam I think... Ali, no Charlo, no. On last on Saturday's, nothing can beat Saddam Ali. No. I don't think so. You Mate, think? look at the know. performance he put in against Cotto. I, no. I know Cotto was on his way no, out, no, but, but still, yeah, that you was saw a glimpses. That, I'll be yeah. honest, I saw glimpses because he won't be natural to the weight again. It'll be forced. I mean, if you saw, did you guys see the clip of again Kell Brook and El Spence? They yeah. spoke and yeah. they right. Yeah. Look at Kell Brook's face. Yeah. 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 My God, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? He that, goes out of shape that, quick, doesn't I, he? I've got to admit, that was my first uh, viewing of Saddam Ali, and I, I was impressed. Yeah, oh, the cotter fight. Yeah, yeah from the cotter yeah, fight. Yeah, I, think, I think, no doubt, you knew what he was kind of getting. It was always going to be that swan song, but I think he dealt with Cotto quite well, um, and I was impressive with the way And And I believe, was, was his only loss, was it against Jacobs? No, he had no not Jacobs. Uh, he had a world title fight, and he lost that world title fight. I can't remember who he was against, man. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, he's yeah. fought for a title once before, and he's yeah. lost. So. He, he is world level. There's yeah. no doubt. So the Mali. Yeah. But um, I, I just think I think Kill Brook probably beat him. I mean, Cotter was so old man at that time as well. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. And Mali is actually a 147 pound fighter. He's not a true 154 pounds. You mm. know what I mean? So I think Kill Brook can win that fight, and I think that's the route they have to take. There's no, there's no other option, man. They have to take that route. If That's they go down the WPC route, you know, 
God forbid, like I think Kell Brook's gonna come home with well, my you eyes. Like mate. your man Wilder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so guys, moving on because you know, uh, got one, <laughs> Bill, isn't it? Well, listen, you're gonna be and careful. They're still trying to keep that in America. Mate, this is Wilder's spokesman, mate. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. Um, <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm straight down the middle, 50-50. and we'll get onto that because that's one of the topics. So quickly moving on. Um, yeah, this static cam. Came you know what? Back. We've never yeah, had so much static. Yeah, you know what I think it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, Punjabis uh, are really um, hairy. You I, know that, yeah? So, uh, what's this guy talking about? <laughs> Listen, so we had Mayweather from. out in the building. It was a Mayweather promotional event. Um, so definitely there was a lot of footage that went out on YouTube. But one of the announcements that we heard about was uh, the fact that Mayweather has said that he has reached out to top rank and they're looking to arrange a fight with Lomachenko against his prospect. Yeah. Gavonta Davis. Um, I'm going to set the scene a little bit. Last couple of weeks, Gavonta Davis has been rolling around with Adrian Broner for quite closely. It's been seen social media. Put out a couple of comments. There was one that was quite prominent last week where he said he was fed to the wolves by Mayweather, essentially, um, but he still went out there and, and, and beat Pedraza to get the title. Um, yeah. What do you think about this statement from Mayweather saying he wants to fight Loman, he wants to arrange the Lomachenko fight, knowing that when he fought Walsh, he said Lomachenko is not in our plans. But hang on, but we've unless I've missed something or slept uh, under a rock, the Lenaris and Lomachenko fight is still on though, right? That's right. Everything yeah, is still yeah. on. So, so he's so still on. They win. Yeah, they're throwing this fight out already. To well, Davis still has to fight as well. So that's right. what I'm saying. So is it actual intention or is there? Something a bit more. I mean, look at look at it. This reading between ways, the lines. I, I I think I think uh, Floyd's uh, Floyd's uh, grabbing good, headlines. Grabbing yeah. headlines. And it? I think he will build that and stretch that fight out for at least a couple of years. Yeah. I don't see that fight happening I for a couple of years. I mean, that's Enough a very surprise. typical yeah. Mayweather kind of tactic, right? Yeah. The guy's a genius, man. Yeah. He knows how the media works and how to get Definitely. publicity for his fighter, right? Yeah. Lomachenko Linares coming out, that's going to be a massive fight. Yeah. Everyone keeps on saying, like, you know, <laughs> you can't say Davis is a monster because you just avoided Lomachenko, right? So what do you do? Lo, you know, Lomachenko's moved up to 135 pounds. He's left 130 pounds, mm. right? And now you're calling him out, right? It makes no sense to me. Mm. It makes absolutely no sense. For me, it was basically sand bites. Mm. It's basically to to get Davis back into the headlines. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, he's also fighting on April 21st or 20th. Yeah. yeah. You know, so what does it do? It drums up interest for that. So mm. everyone's like, okay, let's find out what happens with Davis. You mm. know, does he win this fight? You know, mm. you know. so yeah, I mean, I've, I, I wouldn't take it seriously, man. I mean, we've seen Maver do this in the past. I mean, everyone does it. Everyone should do it with Maver. Mm -hmm. You know, he used to accuse Aram of doing it all the time. Because yeah. Aram and Pat used to always drop Maver's name in it exactly. before their fights. Funny, you know? funny enough, lo last night, Guys, done a very short live feed about who the best uh, boxing promoter is, mm -hmm. and somebody mentioned Mayweather. But funny enough, somebody countered that by saying that he's better at grabbing the headlines than he mm. is at promoting his fighters. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Yeah, which mm. depending on, I mean, I wouldn't put Mayweather up there as one of the best promoters, but I think what you could say is that he gets opportunities for his fighters. So no matter what, I, we know I know yeah. Fear personally, he yeah. got a world title shot against Broner. Yeah. Badu Jack, if you look at what he's done with Badu Jack, you can't say. Yeah, he hasn't delivered. Even EJ Smith has had opportunity, so I would never put him on the Hearn, Heyman, Warren level. I'm the thing, but he's better than Hennessy. And even the uh, you know even, I mean? oh, even oh, is, is it, is it um, Hennessy man? Is it, yeah. I forget Hennessy his name. Ronald the, the Ronald guy, Gavril. Yeah, who, exactly. Gavril, who yeah, just yeah, fought who twice just fought twice against exactly. Benavides. Yeah. yeah, I mean the thing is, what we're gonna say. Look, Mayweather yeah. as a self promoter is phenomenal. There's yeah. no questions about it, right? Now. He can't replicate that model to other individuals exactly. because this is a personal thing. You've yeah. got to be able to sell that stuff yourself, no, right? But what he's been able to do with his power and influence within the boxing industry is get opportunities for his fighters, yeah. right? But if you compare his skill set as a seller, as a salesman, mm. yeah. We say like Eddie Hearn. No, he's not. He's exactly. completely different. Exactly. You know, but exactly. he's got the power of influence. That's the one thing. Yeah. That's that's one skill set that's missing in America. Mm. They don't have like an Eddie, Eddie Hearn salesman. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and he knows that. As but well, the other thing he? as well, right? The American fan base is very different from the British fan base. Mm. You know, the British fan base is you know it's like football focus, isn't it? It's like going out in crowds, well, screaming and shouting. It's easy to in. split. It's easy for you know? boxing to as long as you put out attractive fights. Yeah. It's not hard, and that's I mean it's. I, I, I love it because I'm a big boxing fan. There's a lot of us here. Yeah. Um, but it's not hard. Whereas you would say in America, they've got 
more They've options. got tough. Yeah. And, 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 and boxing, I mean, I've, I've used this term because I believe in that passion, mm. taking boxing to number one. Mm. Because over there, boxing is like number six or yeah, seven exactly, sport. Exactly. You know, there's so many so, other sports. So listen, guys, we're going to go to um, the list, this our list. We'll touch, if we do get to it, we, we'll try, but it is a, a boxing show. So listen, uh, there's an audio I'm about to play. Um, hopefully... Together and put on a great show, hopefully at Wembley or Cardiff, somewhere in the UK, and become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. He's saying that do something in London, then maybe at the end of the year can do something in, in the States as well with, with a rematch or something. Is that something you'd be open to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was kind of the same with Klitschko. Unfortunately, he retired. But we done one in London, and we was actually looking at America. So that's a, definitely an option. Being a world champion means you fight anywhere and everywhere. But I, I do really like the fact that UK boxing is booming and we've cornered the market. So that's why I've never rushed to kind of shoot off anywhere. I'm, I'm happy being based here, and I think a lot of my supporters are happy me fighting here as well. So I think the first one has to be in the UK because also I want to be able to call that shot because I've worked extremely hard to put myself in a power position when it comes to the negotiations. So hopefully he'll understand and come to the UK and get this fight on. And has been a lot of talk and so on do you feel and there's an offer going in do you feel once that offer's on the table there are no excuses on his part is it, is it an offer that you think well if he turns this down then he's not really serious about this fight I don't know I don't know about Wilder or how serious or not he is but flip reversed it put me in a position where I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko Charles Martin when I won the title and then Wilder offered me the same deal I'm going to offer him but so imagine Wilder offering me this deal to come and fight me for four belts I've got one, and Wilder said, if you come to America and fight me for four belts, I'm giving you an opportunity, a great rematch clause, a great upfront clause, so on and so forth. I said to Eddie and my coach, I said, it's crazy because the same offer we're going to offer Wilder, I would... So, Joshua is saying that the offer they're about to make to Wilder's team is something that he would have grabbed with both hands. Mm. Guys, what do you make about this statement that you just heard? I think... And um, what do you think the offer should be? In fact, no, just tell me what you make about the statement you I, just I, heard. I think he's made a phenomenal statement. Mm -hmm. You know, it's logic-based, it's commercially based, mm -hmm. right? It's sound logic, right? He has built up a fan base here, mm. right? You know, why, why should we as UK fans have to travel to America? Mm. Yeah. Buy airplane tickets, book ourselves into hotels to go over to America, mm. you know, why? For us, the we fight should happen here. When you the know? champion is British. And the champion yeah. is British. Yeah. So he's respecting that, man. He's respecting the British fan yeah. base and he's respecting the people that have made him who he is. Mm. Yeah. Right? It's the British fans that have made Joshua a superstar. Mm. No American fans, mm -hmm. no overseas fans. It's the British fans. For him to say that, I've got utmost respect because he's respecting the British fans and the people mm. that have made him successful. Right? I mean, we won't uh, talk about StubHub, but I'm only joking. But I totally agree with you. And if but, I just can just cut in, I think for me, I think... You Without question, the first fight, if they're serious about any offer, the first fight must happen in the UK. I think anybody that makes a reason why it goes to Vegas is not being logic. Seriously. Exactly. Logical. Because because he said he said already, hasn't he, Kojo, that you know the UK uh, the, the boxing power base is here. Mm. Uh the fans have made him over here. If you look at uh Wilder's track record in terms of ticket sales, he can't sell out his own backyard. Mm. And if you take the biggest you know the the billionaire of them all mm. who we mentioned Mayweather he's made his billions in uh, fighting in the US in mm. Vegas hasn't he so yeah. the thing is like you know these guys I mean I sometimes find American fight fans especially Wilder fans the American ones I find them so deluded man Yes, I think it's, I think it's both. Though. Come yeah, both. Okay, but hear me out on the wider stuff, right? Like yeah. for them to come out and say like America is like you know the biggest market, right? I'm like, no, it's not. So okay, but the thing right. is, you got to realize. You forget well, about okay, listen, yeah. listen. This is a stat for Americans. Yeah. Period. So this is what I'm trying to. So like, I think it's, it's not a point talking about it. A stat is that 60 percent of the country do not have passports. Mm. So there's no way they're going to see of anything outside of America. They yeah. don't. Mm. Just generally forget boxing fans, football fans. As but people, let me say, you know, so the, like, so, even so, the pay per view events. So, it's expensive out so, there. so exactly so their mindset is always going to be different you're not going to be able to comprehend yeah, what yeah. I'm saying is this there definitely is a logic for the rematch to be in yes Vegas, that makes sense because that's the boxing that icon makes sense. That's but fair. for the first fight has to be yeah. in the UK I think anybody that disagrees with that can get can, lost can I, so in terms of the offer yeah. yeah, what do you think this offer should be should it be percentage split or should it be a fixed fee well actually I was going to say just quickly I wanted to say about mm -hmm. the rematch 
it's only worth a rematch if, if it's close. If it's not, say Josh knocks him out in three or four, five, six even, rounds. I, don't even think, I think they'll get a rematch. Do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Okay. 100%. All right. Because they will allow Joshua to fight in the States. Even if he wins, he do the rematch in the States. He's comfortable he's going to beat him. Yeah. And he then makes himself an even bigger name to the US market, which is a massive opportunity, in my opinion. In terms, yeah. of, the, in terms of the pay... I think it's going to be a very similar, they're going to structure a very similar deal to the one they offered Parker, which was, I believe 30, it was percentage-based. Yes. It was 30% or something? Yeah, 30 or maybe 30 35? And, yeah, between, I thought it was 35. Someone yeah. said it was 32. So between 30 and 35. The, yeah. the only thing with this one, and they may have to push it a little bit more, is because it's the green and gold belt. It's the undisputed championship on the line. Yeah. Even though Wilders can only sell, what, six, 8,000 mm. tickets back home, right? I mean, I wouldn't say back. that because how much did he sell in the Barclays Centre? Man, half the arena was empty. Yeah, I it was. It was uh, I mean, was. anyway, I'm not going to get into uh, that. I was Al- opinion, Alabama was empty. That was, that was, but he hasn't <laughs> fought Alabama in Alabama. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah. he hasn't fought there for a while. Look, I think that's irrelevant. They were selling tickets. But I do think that's irrelevant when you're talking about fights, in my opinion. I, I think let's talk about the fight. You, okay, in terms of venues as well, because we know they made the Klitschko fight at Wembley. Mm-hmm. Since then, he's had Takam and Parker at Cardiff. Do you mm-hmm. think this is a Wembley fight? This is a Wembley fight. There's no, ifs, of, there's there's no ifs or buts about that. I think also because by the time, if they're serious, and it depends on the timeline again with this offer. So if they're looking at a date, let's say between... I would say August because they're not going to want to compete with the it's World Cup. It's going to be a summer fight. So I think it's, it's going to be between fight. August and September. Yeah. Um, Spurs will be out of Wembley by then. At worst case, Wembley's commitments may be Community Shield, that type of thing. But outside of that, I think definitely it will be Wembley because yeah. Cardiff I, isn't working. You know, like Cardiff to, isn't working. Just to go back on, on the split, I think you know, there's no way a fixed amount is going to work. That fight's not going to happen. It's going no. to have to be a percentage split. You know, yeah. I think that's categoric. Mm. And I think for it to really work, it's going to have to be a 60-40. Mm. This is going to be a I maybe so. Pacquiao kind of structure, right? Yeah. It's going to have to be a 60-40 split. You know, I think it becomes irrelevant when you're talking about things like, you know, uh, Wilder can't sell tickets because what's happening here is the the combination of both of these fighters create a much bigger fight than if they fight individually. For example, if Joshua's making 10 million, 15 million pounds a fight, right? With this fight, you know, the purse will probably become 150, 200 million. Yeah. So what you can probably do, you can say, right, no offense, mate, but you get 50 million, you got 20 million pound fight in Klitschko. So that's your 20 million. That then leaves 180 million pounds. That 180 million pounds is only coming because you're fighting Wilder. So you do a split there. If exactly. That market there is because they're fighting. That 180 right million is what? because they are fighting. Mm. So that gets split 50-50. So when you work out on that basis, that's when you could probably get to a calculation of, say, 60-40. Yeah. It's going to have to be a percentage split, and I think it's going to be a 60-40. And depending on who wins, there's going to be you know a renegotiation in the rematch. There's going to be a rematch. I think you know this fight is too big for I it not to have trilogy. rematch. It could be a trilogy. I think, I think this be. is once the once they start, and that's why I want them to get this fight cracking this year. Because for me, I'm telling you, it's a trilogy. Because no matter what, it will be like Joshua says he likes to scrap. That's why he wants to entertain the Dillian White fight again. For me, Wilder is going to bring him a scrap. I think Wilder, whatever, he will never say no to this type of fight because it always it's about the money as well in terms of big payday. I um, mean, it's an opportunity to win belts, and I think you're looking at the best here. So I think yeah, hopefully they get that mate. I'm hoping the television deals doesn't have anything to play with it because obviously we know Joshua's deal is coming up so yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out um, I was well, just going to say quickly yeah. Kaja, I don't want to put a damper on it I can't me honestly yeah. I think there's more chance of it happening in 2019 why I just believe that you know I think I think honestly the Joshua camp won it and they've made the offer Eddie time and time again has said somebody needs to realise their true value which is obviously Wilder mm-hmm. I think Wilder's going to play it out I don't think it happens this year How I, I mean Nah I don't I think don't so man it, I think I Wilder wants that. to fight Wilder clearly be, wants to fight Few people would say Wilder would play it out But th- there's also Given the, that he's gone on record saying 60-40 and I'll come to England I mean the minute they the fight was finished. He both. I mean, his so, whole, so why, he should have been there two weeks ago. No, right? no, that was all paid. Come on, that's different, man. That's, so, that's 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 different. So. That would have been good publicity. No, 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 though. no, 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 it was no, all paid no, for. No, though. but we know that's why they so wanted the him there. They wanted to push the white fight white, on him. Exactly. Yeah, that's you know, and he's done the smart thing not he's, doing that because that would have fucked up the Joshua fight. Exactly. So he's the right thing, right? But that should happen as well. Nah, man, forget that. Dylan White versus Wilder. Come on, man. Yeah, because what belt does White have? No, White doesn't... Yeah, but imagine if any of us in Dillian's spot, right? Yeah. Now, for, for the last 16 months, the guy has fought three final eliminators, yeah. right? To hold that mandatory p- position. Mm-hmm. So, as much as I'm a big green and gold belt fan, mm-hmm. why hasn't the WBC enforced their own rules? 
three final eliminators. Okay, right. that's a very fair point, but I mean, from I don't a even, fan's he, perspective, he, he's right. only became silver recently, anyway. So the silver, no, but the, what makes but him but the manager. Chizora fight was a final. Has eliminator. had a final eliminator though. This is what yeah, I'm saying. Th- that was this was, no, was. No, no, it was this fight just gone. No. That's why he got the belt. If you remember after the Chizora fight, there was no belt given, so that's it, why he has the WBC silver. Yeah, and for me. As far as my knowledge says that now he's in a position to be the number one fight. But I think Wilder's looking at it, and this is why I don't think it'll be Wilder. He's saying, listen, unification oversteps and the mandatories. Yeah. All right, so, so let's flip it very quickly. Mm. So how comes Stavern, who's okay, former champion, but yeah. was out for two years, why did he get a shot? Because Ortiz Ortiz uh, fucked up, so they had to bring him in. And he had also because he he don't forget he was due to fight Povetkin for to become the number one, and Povetkin failed a drug test. That's what it yeah. was. So yeah. Stavern's always been waiting around yeah. to be number one mandatory, and he did actually that fight was arranged, and they had to pay Stavern step aside money. And then Ortiz fucked up, and then they had to bring Stavern back. I'll tell you in. what, while White would have done better than Stavern. Maybe, maybe not. But that's my point. It's irrelevant to White. Yeah, I just think for me, and that's why I think, all right, I have to say this. I'm, I've, I just want to see that fight because I think it's 50 50. But I think people yeah, make excuses stage, man, why. At this stage, why, why White we can't see that fight. Argument. I mean, look, let's, I, I, Pam, be serious, man, right? You got an opportunity to see Joshua Wilder yeah. or Wilder White. What do you want to watch, man? <laughs> Obviously, the first there one. You go. But, there you but go. But the question is, do you guys honestly think it's going to happen this year? Because I mean, if I, we take Joshua by his world, fight. yeah. I think, I think you take, could. I mean, may, maybe not summer. I mean, if it's not summer, but if we take Joshua like, by his word, and, and in terms of that, this interview that came out yesterday, then I think we have to say they're going to put an offer. And I don't see, as long as it's not stupid and you know it's not a fix because I agree with you it has to be percentage. So as yeah. long as it's not fixed, we're going to give you 20 million, Wilder. Come and fight us. Then... I think, yeah, there's no reason why this fight shouldn't get I made. Don't, I don't think, uh, considering Parker got 7 million, I reckon they'd be offering him round 10. Nah, That's what man. I think. If that... they were to go a fixed fee. I mean, I no, 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 but I would agree with you. But I think that doesn't help the fight get made. So then I'll be questioning why they're taking well, that. Exactly. Because I think I think prior to that, very quickly, I think his biggest purse to date is the... St- five million. Million, though, man. It's five is, million. Is it five million? Five million Do- yeah. And that was dollars as that well, dollars, right? Yeah. That was but dollars. The thing is, Palm, I think I agree with you on that. And I think, yeah, we know that Joshua, the commercial model, that's why he's the A side. Yeah. That's why he'll take a bigger split. That's why the fight will happen in London. But you can't but use think, that argument, right? Look at... Look but at, I think at some stage, you just have to say, okay, cool, he's agreeing to that. Now let's, let's make the fight. So yeah. I ask, and so my opinion is this is why I think it's 50 50 um, is that I think they've both got opportunities to win but for me I feel if Joshua's delaying the fight I feel his camp don't feel they're ready but to according, win that same according argument, to Eddie Hearn yeah. Eddie, hasn't Eddie offered him round 6 million just to fight no, Dillian but, White no no but hear me out but mate. why would you fight Dillian White and he hasn't Forget Dillian out? White but that's the same argument was used with the Triple G Canelo right, right. like you know yeah. Triple G hasn't earned any money anywhere like this this is his biggest purse he should take it Sorry, why should he take it? There's a bigger Percy, and they, everyone knows it. Why should Wilder just accept? Right, hold on. I've only earned this, so I'm going to give you double that. Well, so what, Joshua? So you work away with 90% of the purse. You know, I'm definitely responsible for create, creating this purse, right? Yeah. You know, it's. it's, it's, it's Listen, guys, let's go to the lines. I'm going to go out to the lines quickly and t- 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 get, some, get some of their opinions. So, D- Daniel, we're back out to you, mate. What's your thoughts? Yeah, and this Wanda Joshua sort of scenario, sort yeah. of thing. Yes. Um, well, I want the fight to happen as soon as possible. I don't give a shit what they earn, what, what's what, what's this, what's that. Shut up, get in the ring and fight. You know, you know how it goes, this Kojo, with me. I just want to see them fight, all the other stuff. Irrelevant to me. I just want them in the ring and I want them fighting. That's it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, thank you. That's it. Yeah, no worries. So that's right. a blood and guts <laughs> answer. <laughs> exactly. Take the politics out of it. Take the money out of it. I'm going to move on, D. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support. Going to move right. to another caller. Cheers, man. Uh, Tom, back out to you, mate. <clears throat> What's your thoughts? The Wilder Joshua offer. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I have to uh, agree. Palm, in terms of the fight, I don't think it's going to happen this year. I think December of this year, if not next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of the offer, I think 60-40 is probably a fair um, pot for both. Um, obviously, like if you sort of justify uh, Wilder's opponents, he's only really fought two outstanding names in Ortiz and Stavern. And Stavern, you know, isn't as credible of an opponent as Ortiz. So I think excluding the money, the politics, the broadcaster situation... I think the fight just needs to happen and 
I can see that I can see um, one fight happening in, in the UK first, and then Joshua uh, going over to America to expand his uh, fan base over there with other fights um, with other American fighters. So that's how I see it playing out. Tom, Perfect. just a quick question for you: Do you think there is an argument that uh, Wilder is also getting favourable protection by the WBC? Yeah, I definitely. Um, before he fought Ortiz, I thought. He had one of the most padded records in boxing for a modern fighter. Um, I think now because he's beaten Ortiz and he's, you know, weathered the storm and he's come back and, you know, stopped Ortiz the way he did, I think people are taking him more seriously now as opposed to just listening to all the talk. Um, but I can I can see Wilder um, fighting someone of no um, next, maybe... Um, another top contender before the Joshua fight but obviously everyone wants to see the Joshua fight next but I think if he's patient uh, with it um, then obviously it has to happen so yeah if he doesn't fight Joshua next I think he needs to fight White he has to fight White if he doesn't fight Joshua he yeah. has to that's the mandatory right that's another serious challenge he's got to take that fight I, I think uh, Tom I think all, you know Tom Tom yeah Tom you know what you saying and and that's that's my whole analysis for for basing the fact the fact that I don't see this fight happening between 2019 because I think Wilder is a little bit deluded and I think he's going to try and hold out for 50-50 and he'll probably nah, set, uh, nah, nah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think he'll eventually settle for 60-40 hear me out made that but, comment, but <laughs> when it, he he needs to realize what his market value is and I think he won't realize that until next year Maybe, as you said, maybe it might be December, it might be next year. I, I think, think he's going to try and hold for 50 I, I think he's already accepted he's right, a Cheers, side. thanks for that, Tom. Um, we're going to move Tom. on to another one. Cheers, thanks. I mean, for me, I don't think... Yeah, I, I, I can't agree with that. Purely on the basis of... I think he's accepted he's a B-side and he's going to take a lot yeah, of percentage. Yeah, I think, I that's, think that's we've given. moved on from that now. Okay, so opinion. how much do you think uh, he's willing to I think he's thinking 64 we. Yeah, but in terms of... Hello. Yes, big man, Jason. 20 minutes. How you doing, bro? How you doing, Nick? Yeah, we're good, we're good. We're yeah, I'm good, man, I'm good. What's on your mind? Yes, yeah. Jason, how you doing? Hey, Jason. I'm good, thank you, man. man. How you doing, man? Yeah, good, good. You've been behaving? That's good. <laughs> no stranglings? <laughs> well, yeah, I've been out for been, been out for a couple of, week, uh, couple of weeks with a shoulder injury. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, so I just uh, had an operation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cheers, man, cheers. We but let's get straight to the point. Um, AJ versus Wilder, I mean... I don't know. Every time this conversation comes up, it's it's always finances that come into this conversation. Yeah. And I think it's because of Anthony Joshua's team, hence why finances always come into this situation. I'm just glad for the fact that I've heard uh, Anthony Joshua say uh, said that he's made an offer to Wilder. Um, however, I'm not really listening to it all now because you know I paid too much attention and. I just want to hear that there's a natural agreement because although he's made an offer, I don't know what the offer's like, you know what I mean? Very true. And, you know, can't, can't give Wild the peanuts and then expect him to, you know, just, just you know, basically take it. In regards to Eddie Hearn um, talking about he should fight White next and he should, he's offered him X amount of moons, I don't think... I think what Wilder's doing is correct in regards to not letting Eddie Hearn dictate to him because, I mean, although Team Joshua or Eddie Hearn is the A team, you know, Wilder's still a champion. So you should pick and choose. You shouldn't, people should just be coming to him and saying, oh, you should fight him and, you know, Kings should fight Kings. Yeah. But um, I'm, 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 I'm glad that there's a, um, well, a step forward to make this fight happen, I guess. Jason, just a quick question. Do you think also part of the issue might be that um, in the same way uh, Joshua has Eddie, Wilder doesn't seem to have like a strong promoter on his side? Well, yeah, I mean, Eddie Pan is a great promoter. I mean, certain times I do think he talks shit, but he is a very good promoter. He's yeah, probably one of the... Palm's best. a Hearn spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Hearn spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> Only because the dude. But no, he, he is. He, he is like he is the best promoter. But you know, promoters do can talk a load of rubbish. Yeah. I mean, we, we we're saying that um, this fight may not happen. I was actually saying that this fight is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's because of Team um, Joshua. So the fact that 
uh, Joshua's actually finally said something. I'm kind of happy, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, maybe I was wrong. Mm. Um, you know, if they, if they don't fight in 2018, when it comes to 2019, coming from Eddie Hearns, it's Martha itself, like, the mandatories are going to kick in for both of them. Mm. Um, but Jason, say Yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what I think. No worries, Jason. We're going to move on to the next caller, um, but I appreciate your support as well. Hello? Hello, yeah. I said we're moving on to the next caller, but I appreciate your support. Cheers, cheers. All right, cheers, Thanks, Jason. Cheers. Going out to 587. 587, you're live. Hi, right, guys, it's Francis. It's that Kodja and the man. What, yes, what, what, what are we saying, Francis? <laughs> how, are you, how you doing, boy? First time calling up. Good oh, night. Calling. Yeah, yeah, man, that first time calling. I thought I'd give, give phone in and give some support. I'm trying to watch the game as well. So Thank you very I just much. wanted to phone in and comment. Very briefly on the, the AJ Wilder situation. Uh, first year, sort of, a, I suppose, a, a passive fan, just to say, really excited that the fight seemed like it's going to go ahead at some point. I hope it happens in 2019. And uh, so just to leave a bit more time in case it does happen in Vegas. Uh, it's been a long time, obviously, since the heavyweight division has been as exciting as it is now. So I think there's more power to all the boxes involved in a division. Um, I think in terms of sort of location, um, I'm kind of old school and I always feel that with most sports there's a home of the sport and my, in particular I sort of have visions of this green WBC belt and I just feel that commercially it totally makes sense as you guys have stated that the fight happens here I guess for Joshua and I think and then you mentioned that he's sort of paying back the British fans that are showing a lot of support but from I think a nostalgic point of view and from a historical context it would have been amazing if they could make this fight happen in Vegas uh, because it's like I have this I have this vision of seeing in year to come the sort of Bruno Oliver McCall situation in Wembley Stadium. It just doesn't hold the weight. Mm-hmm. And Vegas is still the mecca. It, to fans like me, I'm not as deep as you guys. It's still, for me, the mecca of boxing. And it would be good to see Joshua go there, take the belt off that guy if he's sort of holding up British fans and British boxing, go and take the belt off the guy. It's the WBC belt, and it'll be amazing if it can be done there. Um, in terms of the stadium fights that could happen in the UK, I think, Kodo, you mentioned that Cardiff doesn't work. I don't know if that's a logistics thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's the fact that when the fight finishes, it's like you're in rainy Cardiff. And even to do it in Wembley, I've seen the fight in Wembley. The reality is the majority of the fans will actually not see the fight yeah. because they can't afford the tickets to get close enough to the action to see the blow. So you end up watching it on the screen and therefore you leave the stadium thinking, well, actually, I probably would have been better off watching it on Sky Sports. So I think Joshua should definitely have the fight. I think he's in control. He probably should command the majority of the purse. Probably he's got three or four belts. But personally, I want it either in Vegas or really for Joshua to do the big one and let's have something iconic like the Rumble in the Jungle, do it in the wild card, do it in Lagos, mm. do it something somewhere completely left field where it's like the fight fans will really remember this iconic boxer doing something special. But Wembley Stadium, Cardiff, Oliver McCall, Bruno, Wilder, I mean, it's all a bit, it's money for them, but it's a bit boring in my opinion. I mean, I would definitely say that, I mean, I think from a, from a straight logic, pure realistic view, I think it, it's Wembley. But if it was me, that trip to Vegas, when people say, why do you want it in Vegas? It's, it is the iconic status. It's the trip of potentially doing, if, if the fact you could do a road trip there is absolutely on the next level. Um, but yeah, I think there is something very ballsy about going there and introducing yourself to the US public with such a fight. Um, but there's... And taking very, the belt very, off those guys but it's as very, well. Eddie taking Hearn, the belt off those guys. And, and Eddie Hearn would not allow that. Um, they would not take that I risk. Would never, yeah. They would never take that risk, especially because I think they're going to be able to play on the fact of what Inam said, the British fans will, will appreciate it more. You'll be able to get 90,000 into Wembley, but you can't get 90,000 to Vegas. Um, yeah. And I don't even think Joshua's got a Hatton factor where he could take 25,000 to Vegas, if I'm being honest. So, and from a commercial point of view, yeah. is he going to make the same I, I, I sort of money? Yeah, yeah uh, definitely commercial. Well, just the last question before yeah. I leave for the next call. That's really a question for you guys. How much weight does the WBC belt hold compared to these other belts which to fight fans so I look I'm at I'm gonna ask w- I'm gonna say I'm gonna say IBS, WBO I mean I remember Herbie Hyde holding the WBO and 
I, I mean, mean the IBF and I mean WBA, WBA. But how much weight does it hold in the heavyweight division when it call, when it took when you when you talk about power of the champion? So listen, I will say it like this: in general, um, lots of different fighters have held different belts. Good fighters have held different belts. Lomachenko, if you look yeah. at the belts, he's got WB, WBOs. Um, but the WBC, I'm just gonna have to say, really, just probably three names that are just quickly on the top of my head: Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Mayweather. When you see those guys with their belts, they are the green and gold. Yeah, yeah, the boy, iconic boy, boy, boy. boxers, the yeah. register, the list of boxers that are their yeah. faces on the belt. Um, so there's yeah. no question that the Wilder the had, if Wilder had the, the IBO, <clears throat> you could probably even say what, what, what Joshua doesn't even need to fight him. He's a no the WBC, yeah, he has to fight him. The WBC yeah. is yeah. what gives him bargain. WBC is the pinnacle of heavyweight title holders. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you ain't got that belt, even though, obviously, I know Joshua outnumbers Wilder in the number of belts he has. But if you don't have that green belt, the green and gold, in the heavyweight division, I don't know about the other, the other weight classes, but in the heavyweight, if you ain't got that belt, you ain't, it's not pure and it's not real. So you have to go and take it, whether it's done in Wembley, Cardiff or Vegas. But if he wants to be an absolute connoisseur, if he, as long as he can get the urn, whether it's through the pay-per-view, so it's got to be done in Vegas. Otherwise, that fight, because remember, guys, Wilder is not an amazing champion. Yeah, one of your, I think your guests have said he's had his career padded. Mm. He's a brawler. He's wild. He's all over the place. He's not technically neat. He's not like he's fighting one of the creme de la creme heavyweight title holders. To take it in Wembley Stadium and let us think, look back, and it's like you're looking at Bruno McCall. I mean, I, I go back to YouTube. We all watch YouTube, these iconic fights. I don't think I've ever done. I mean, Bruno was awful, obviously, but we're not going to be watching that fight. It's just not going to happen. It's Vegas for me. And that's, that's my piece for today. No and problem. keep up the good work. Guys. Appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Appreciate the support. Take easy. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. We're going to have to wrap up soon. So, guys, final words on... Sorry, we've overrun, but final words on this offer. Do we think... It's, can we believe it? Should we get behind well, AJ? Or, we'll, as Palm said, like, the offer... Could the offer be 2019? Maybe the offer's not for this year? Well, we don't know the details of it, you yeah. know what I mean? We, we can't yeah, take it seriously. We, we don't know the, what the offer is, yeah. right? So, you know, I think it is percentage based, mm. but they've obviously, they've, they've probably put a figure behind it. Mm. I still think in his own mind, Wilder probably wants a bigger split. And, mm. and uh, I mean, Tom said it and I, I honestly believe that fights, I, I, I honestly don't think they're going to try and make it for later this year. I think it's a 2019 fight. I mean, the very fact they support an offer in, <clears throat> that's good news. Mm. That shows he wants to fight. I feel that they're going to do it in 2018 because, you know, it's a potential trilogy. They're going to have 2018 fight. Probably one in 2019, probably one at the end of 2019. Do you know what I mean? So, so uh, listen, guys, we're going to wrap up because we're over, overrun and man like me lives in the country. Um, so don't forget to follow us on all the Instagram, Facebook, it's YouTube. It's all on Raps on, Raps on TV. Raps on TV. Raps on TV. Yeah. Think quickly. Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and even the website, Probox Respect TKO. Com. So there thanks for all the callers. All for the Ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate the support. Look out for new stuff. Definitely looking at a mobile app, so you're going to get the latest in raps on TV. So look out for that on Android and iPhone. And then hopefully, um, and more than hopefully, live streaming. So it's going to be a countdown. 2018 is the year raps on TV takeover. It's the 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 takeover.